We often hear people tell us to charge what you're worth or you're worth more than that price tag or they're not paying you what you're worth. Well, friend, I'm here to debunk this statement, show you why this doesn't work and give you some practical tips to help you decide if you should raise your prices or if maybe you should even lower them for now. So let's dive in. Hey guys, it's Elizabeth McCravey and you're listening to the Breakthrough Brand Podcast. Each week, I'll bring you workshop style trainings that teach you how to stand out online, design success from the inside out and create a breakthrough business. It's time to turn viewers into raving fans and design the business and life of your dreams. I'm so excited you're here. All right, you guys, I am so excited to dive into today's topic all about the statement, charge what you're worth. And just the question of like, what should we even charge? So I see so often in Facebook groups and just questions from a lot of times, mostly newer business owners, but asking like, what can I charge for X, Y, and Z? What should I charge for this? And a lot of times the answer to that is you should charge what you're worth. Be sure you're charging what you're worth. You're worth more than, you know, a hundred dollars for this or a thousand for that or whatever. And we equate our price tag for our business to our literal self-worth. And to start this episode, I want to remind you that you are not the same as your business. You've got to separate the two things. You've got to separate who you are at your core and where you find your value and your self-worth from the business and how well it does. Because when, by keeping them together, it leads to like a lot of like unsettling, not peace in your life and it can lead to burnout as well. So by connecting what you charge to your literal self-worth, you're setting yourself up for an emotional disaster because that's just not true. And I know it's hard. Um, it becomes harder for people really like myself who your business name is your actual name. Like my business name is Elizabeth McCravey, you know, and that is also my name as myself. So that even becomes harder to see them as separate when that's the case. But my encouragement to you, and it goes into this charge what you're worth mentality, but is that you've got to separate the two. So when you keep them together, you're teaching yourself that when a client tells you, oh, your service are just too expensive, or I don't think that price is worth what you're offering. You teach yourself that that's a reflection of you and your personal self worth. When a client asks for a refund, that's because you're not worthy. When you have a really low profit month, you believe that's because you're not worth the money. Or when someone says something negative or critical about your business, that's because you're not good enough at what you do. So you take all of these things and you make it be about who you are as your core, and that leads to just an emotional disaster. So your self worth is not found in your business in your salary and the amount of clients you have and the amount of money people are paying you, how much you can charge people for your amazing services. That's not where your self-worth is found. So you've got to find your self-worth somewhere else entirely. And for me, my self-worth comes from my faith in God and my belief that what he says about me is the truest thing about me. And that's where I find my enoughness and my worth, not in the price tag of what clients are paying me. So that's the first thing to start out is just to know when it comes to the charging what you're worth, you're not the same thing as your business. So to talk to you guys, if you are listening right now, and you're newer to whatever it is you're doing, um, or newer to owning a business in general, no, you shouldn't be charging the same as someone who has more projects under their belts. So like when you're brand new, you shouldn't be charging the same as someone who has been doing this for a couple of years or just has a lot more experience. And a lot of times when people give the advice of charge what you're worth, they're usually trying to communicate to you that you need to charge what the people at the top of your industry are charging or what that person you really look up to charges and all that kind of stuff. And I personally don't think years in business matters for choosing your pricing. I think you can have accomplished a lot in less years in business and be able to charge more. But I do think your 
experience matters in, in the sense of like how many clients you've worked with, what your systems are like, the kind of experience um, you're offering in this service. So like if you're a photographer and maybe you've only had one year under your belt, but like you have served those clients so well and they're raving about you and you're photos are awesome and at just like this amazingly high skill level, then people might want to pay more for your services. And it's not about how many years you've been in business, so to speak. So I don't think the years in business thing matters as much. But I do think when you're brand new, you need to know that you can't charge the same as someone who's been doing it longer and actually make money. And that's the thing that's so hard is that a lot of times people do that they like just look at competitors pricing and just say, Oh, well, she charge that much. I'm just going to charge the same thing, do the exact same package. I've literally had so many people copy my exact package and pricing like tons of times. And the sad part about it is like, if it doesn't work for you, as in like, you're not booking clients at that rate, because you don't have as much experience yet, then you feel like you suck and that you're not a good business owner. And then you end up wanting to quit. And it's all just because your price is not right for your experience level yet. So just like when someone, let's say like just graduates college and applies for their first real job, they're not going to be hired for like a top level multi six figure position. It's the same way in our businesses, like you have to work your way there, get the experience, all that kind of stuff. And we forget that sometimes though about our businesses. And remember, like I said earlier, this isn't because you're not worthy because your worthiness is not equal to your paycheck. This is because of your experience level. And that's okay. That's a fun thing about owning a business is you get to work with so many different kinds of clients, you get to build up your skills, and you can eventually continuously raise your prices. And another thing I love about this, and this is especially true in graphic design, but we need people doing service work at every pay level so that we can serve clients with every need. Because I know right now in my business in my current pricing, it is not right for everyone. And I don't want to be right for everyone. Like my brand name website design package isn't for every single person. But for the people it's for it's like, oh, it's 100 million gazillion times for you. But there's someone else out there for the people my services aren't right for and I love that. And that's the thing we need to remember there's plenty of stuff to go around. And when you're new to the game, new to your business, or you don't have much built up experience, or in the case of like design and photography and things like that, you don't have much portfolio work yet, your main focus needs to be getting portfolio work, getting testimonials and getting experience. So those are the things it's portfolio work, testimonials and experience. So that needs to be your main focus. So if you're listening right now, and you're like, Yeah, that's me, I've been in business a year, and I want to charge more, like focus on these things, focus on creating the most dynamite experience for your clients, focus on gaining portfolio work that you love and testimonials, which I'm going to make an episode later, all about getting great testimonials. So stay tuned for that. But those are the things that are going to allow you to grow your business. So let me tell you guys about some stories from when I was a brand new designer. So guess how much I was paid for my first ever branding project? Just guess. Think of a number. Go ahead. I will pause for a second so you can think. So I was paid zero dollars. And why? Like, why was I paid zero dollars? Was I worth zero dollars? Like, no, I made zero dollars because that's what I charged because I didn't have any experience in that yet. And you guys, I'm telling you that I didn't feel like I had experience in it, even though you know, I had just come from an advertising job where I was doing design. I studied graphic design college, but I was okay doing that first project for free because I needed to learn how to be a professional brand designer. And this particular client was kind of like my guinea pig for learning. Like, how do I manage the project? How do I bill people? What things should I give to them and when? Like, there's so much to learn that you don't even think about in any kind of service based business. When you're running the show, you're leading the client through an experience. And that was my first swing at branding specifically for a real client. And that's, that's why I did. That's what I charged. So, and if you remember, 
from episode one, I talked through about like my business story, but I was basically a full-time nanny early on in my business. So that's where I was making most of my income. So I was earning money that way, which made it okay for me to like take on a free project. And this was the only free project I did after that I started, um, I started charging, but you know what I got out of this free project? Like, no, I did not earn any money, but I did get an incredible testimonial that's actually still on my website today. I got an awesome portfolio piece that, you know, it's, it's what my work was like then. It's not like the work I'm providing now is better because again, I've gotten more experience, but it was right for that client at the time. And I've also gotten tons of referrals from this client um, that led to other clients. And then three years later, after that first unpaid project, the client came back to me wanting to pay me to do branding again for another one of his businesses. So I worked for free. And then he came back wanting to pay which actually had to decline uh, his offer because I was booked up and I was not taking any more new clients. But it, it that's what I'm saying it led to I learned I learned so much I took the project seriously, even though I wasn't paid and I got better and learned learned how to be a professional brand designer and I got a portfolio piece and a awesome testimonial and tons of referrals. So after that first project, I think my next one, I don't remember the exact price, I definitely have it somewhere, but I think my next branding project was probably 300 to $400. And then the first branding and website combo project I ever did was about $800. So those prices are all really low compared to what I charge now, but they were correct for my experience level at the time. Like that that was what I needed to charge. And when you look at what I'm charging so much more for now, it is a literal different Interrupting this episode with a suggestion for the small business owners listening. Ever wonder what you should do for healthcare when you and your spouse are both self-employed so there's no work-provided health insurance to participate in? Well, when my husband Adam joined me in the entrepreneurial job space over four years ago, we joined Christian Healthcare Ministries instead of getting traditional health insurance. And it was the best decision for us, especially in these years of growing and raising a family while also running multiple businesses. CHM is a health cost-sharing ministry and is a faith-based alternative to health insurance. We did tons of research before choosing CHM, and if you know me and Adam, you know we are all about doing the math when making big or small financial decisions. And even though it's not insurance, CHM shares 100% of eligible medical bills, which is more than the typical 70 or 80% of medical bills paid for by insurance companies. All sharing is determined by the CHM guidelines, which you can check out before and after joining. And for the mamas and mamas to be listening, you truly cannot find a better healthcare option for maternity care. I had a vaginal delivery and a C-section and birth center care and hospital care between my two pregnancies and births, and it was all 100% shared for. And outside of birth, we've had our share of emergency room visits and procedures as a family, and those costs were all shared by members at Christian Healthcare Ministries, leaving us only paying our monthly contribution. CHM is less expensive month to month than insurance, and because there's no network, you can choose your care with whichever providers best fit your family. I seriously just cannot recommend Christian Healthcare Ministries enough. You've got to check them out. Go to elizabethmccravey.com slash CHM for more information. Also putting that link in the show notes, elizabethmccravey.com slash CHM. Now back to the episode. product really that I'm giving people like, because my prices are a ton higher than I was just saying a lot more than $800, but I'm not even giving people the same thing. Like I've leveled up my offering in every way as I've learned and grown through the process of being a designer. And if I had waited till I was skilled enough to charge what I do now, then I never would have learned anything. I had to build up and build slowly. And also, if I had started out at my current pricing, I would not have booked anyone. Like, I know that for a fact. I wouldn't have been able to book anyone because the clients I'm attracting now, would well, I wasn't attracting them with my work. Like, and my prices wouldn't have been aligned with what my work was like at that time. And I'm okay with that. Like, I'm okay to say that, that like I've improved and that at the time that's like what I needed to charge. So know that like your prices could be messing with and actually could be one of the bigger things messing with whether or not people are booking you. Like if they feel like it's not right for what you're offering at this time, you need to lower, which we're going to get into that in a minute of how to know if you need to raise your prices or lower them. But as you start out, 
whether you're any kind of service-based business, I know I speak a little bit from the designer perspective, but all this applies to anyone. But know that when you're starting out, I want you to focus on getting testimonials, which you're going to ask every client you work with to write you a testimonial, which again, there will be an episode coming on that. And I want you to focus on getting real portfolio work that's solid and that you're proud of and learning, learn how long stuff takes, learn what processes work, learn what complaints the client had and how you can improve, learn all of that. And then that's when you'll be able to charge more is as you learn through those things. And there will always be clients who want things at every price point. So there will always be, talking about graphic design, clients who want a $5 logo on Fiverr. There will always be clients who want like a $1,000 logo. And there will always be clients who want like the Cadillac level experience for thousands. And there's work available for everyone at every level. When this is true of designers, photographers, whatever you're in, just know that like there is work there for you and you can slowly grow your business at a pace that makes sense by raising your prices as it makes sense. So like I said at the beginning, often see, I'm sure you guys do too, and all these Facebook business groups, people saying things like, I'm starting a website design business or I'm starting a photography business. How much should a website cost? How much do wedding photos cost? How much is someone willing to pay for a wedding planner? All of those kinds of things. And the truth is like, it's not like a how much should it cost? It should cost how much people are willing to pay you for your level experience, your end product and the results they will get. So it's how much people are willing to pay you for your experience level, the end product and the results that they'll get, which means there's no flat rate, like simple answer to this kind of question. You should charge what people are willing to pay and what you personally feel your work is worth. So that's so, so, so important. We'll get into that in a minute, but know too, that you can experiment with your pricing. So what I actually recommend doing is update your website when you're at a time where you're like, Hmm, I kind of am thinking about raising my prices, update your site. Uh, if you list your prices there and try out a higher pricing level. And I recommend keeping it the same for about one month to really test it out and choose the month where it's not the holidays or something like, or some kind of time where it affects when people actually booking you for your business, but test it out for about a month and then see if bookings and inquiries go down or if they go up and figure out what works for you. And of course, know too that like if you quoted someone at a lower price and then you raise it two weeks later on your website, you need to honor what you quoted them. That's just like good business sense, but you can test out different pricing and see what your potential customers want to pay and also what you feel confident charging because that matters too. Like if you feel like you are charging people too much, like that's a sign that you should probably lower your prices. So recognizing that pricing isn't based on your self-worth can open you up to so much growth. So when you reframe your mindset about this, you can start asking the right questions about your pricing. So here are some questions you need to ask if you're someone who's like, oh my gosh, I want to raise my prices. Here are some questions I want you to be asking. How can I offer a better client experience? What can I do differently to stand out from my competitors? you know, create a competitive edge of like, can make you be able to charge more. What systems do I have in place that are not working so well? And how can I fix them? What complaints and feedback have clients given me in the past that I can work on improving? How can I learn to be better at what I do? You know, are there podcasts like this one that you could be listening to webinars, online courses, conferences, things like that? Like what are things you can do to grow? What new skills could you start learning on your own or again, like through podcasts and things like that? What skills can you work on learning? So think about how can I make things better? How can I serve my clients better? And those are the questions you need to be asking to be able to raise your prices, not just raising them because you are quote unquote worth it. Okay. So now last thing, I'm going to tell you how you should know if you should raise your prices and how you should know if you should lower them. So I've got a couple of different points here. So first, how to know if you should raise your prices. So Kathy Olson, who is a fellow graphic design friend, gave me this advice, um, I guess last year. And her advice was how how to know if you should raise your prices is if you're booking over 50% of your inquiries, then you should raise your prices. So that was true of me when she gave me that advice. 
But the reason that's a good thing to remember is because it shouldn't be a super easy decision for someone to decide if they want to work with you. Like it should be easy in the sense of like you're providing them all the info they need and they feel confident in their decision. But I would say for like these kind of service based businesses, it shouldn't feel like oh, like it's a no brainer, like it's so cheap, it's so easy, like whatever, you know, it should be a little like it should be a decision that they need to make and that some people might not be right for. So if like every single person who reaches out to you is like, yeah, I want to work with you, that could mean that you should raise your prices. Another thing, if you, this is especially true of designers, but if you're booking out like super, super far in advance on projects because you just have so many people that want to work with you, then that could be an indicator that you need to raise your prices. There was a time, and I will probably do an episode on this, but there was a time in my graphic design business where I wanted to book out really far and I saw that as something to like strive for because it was stability for me. It helped me like know like I know where the next dollar is coming from and if I book out all these months in advance then I'll always know where um, that have money like expected to come in. It was like a comfort thing for me and so I was booking clients out like you guys like literally like a year like I was like booking out so so far in advance and I think part of it was that my prices were too easy for everyone. Like it was just, everything just felt like a no brainer too much. And it was causing me to book with like everyone, which I adore all those clients um, I worked with during that time. But the booking that far in advance wasn't great for me or for them. So I've kind of, I fixed that system since then. Uh, But that was part of it for me. I was just booking out really far in advance. Uh, Another reason you could know if you should raise your prices, if your clients aren't taking you seriously. So I caution putting this point in here because there are a ton of reasons why someone could not be taking you seriously. It could be because of the service you're offering, like the experience you're giving them and things like that. But one reason they could be not taking working with you seriously is if the investment is kind of like a whatever to them. Like, so if your prices are so low that it's like, oh, I just kind of like might as well forget about that. Like it was nothing. It could kind of feel more like they don't care and they aren't going to be as interactive and put as much energy into the project. So like this is a similar thing to where we hear people talk about how like we invest our time and what we pay for. Um, It's the same reason why like free membership sites or free mastermind groups aren't going to have the same engagement level as someone who's paying because when you're paying for it, there's skin in the game and you care more and the more you're paying the more true that is but that also does not mean you should charge more just because you can I feel very firmly on that that some things should only cost so much okay so next how to know if you should lower your prices so first one you're not booking anyone like if that is you this is like you'll know like you'll know that you're not booking anyone maybe your prices are too high that is worth trying regardless even if you think the pricing isn't the issue try lowering your prices to match maybe where uh, your experience is for now and then raise them again later so that's one that's the biggest one like if you're not booking people at your current price then consider that that doesn't mean you're a bad business owner like I hate that so many people feel like they're failing but really it's just that their pricing is off like so that's a huge reason to consider lowering your prices if you've just looked at all your competitors and copied what they're doing like consider fixing it up you know Uh, if you have a gut feeling that your prices are too high so you know yourself and you know your business and if you feel guilty about your prices there are two big things I want you to explore here. So first is to consider why you feel guilty. So if you feel guilty because like, let's say you, f- you don't think you're worthy of earning money, then you need to do some money mindset work on that. And I highly suggest Amber Lillystrom's book, Master Your Money Mind. It is one of my favorites. It's small, easy to read, really feels like a workbook in a lot of ways, but that'll help you on your money mindset stuff. But if you feel guilty because you think you're not like worthy of earning money, then like, Like that's something to explore entirely. Like if you feel like you need to keep charging less because you're not worth it, 
that that's not the right reason to be charging less. But if you feel guilty because you think your prices are just not reasonable for a client to pay, then I want you to consider lowering them or improving your services to match that price point. So like make a better client experience, provide more of what they need to match what your pricing is because you've got to feel good about your pricing, you guys, in order to sell well. Like if you look at your website and you're like, man, everything I offer is so overpriced, you're gonna have a hard time with integrity selling people on that. And that's how I feel about like in website design specifically, like there's only so much I think people should charge for that like for at least like the kind of clients that many of us are working with same for like photography and things like that like you've got to feel good about your pricing and if you feel like it's outlandish what you're charging then maybe you want to consider lowering it okay so those are some ideas for if you should lower your prices but the biggest one here is that if you're not booking anyone and the biggest one for if you should raise your prices is if you're booking over 50% of your inquiries, okay? So consider both those things and then kind of figure out like, should I lower or should I raise my prices? So also just like <laughs> advice to everyone, please quit asking in Facebook groups what you should charge. Um, Cause so often we see that, like the question of like, what should I charge, what should I charge? And the truth is you guys, here's the answer. You should charge what people are willing to pay for your level experience, your end product, and the results they will get. That's it. There's no flat, simple answer. You've got to charge based on those things, what people are willing to pay for your service and what you feel confident charging. So Facebook groups aren't like with just general people answering, not knowing anything about your services, your experience level, anything like that. Like that's not the place to find your answer. Working with a business coach or asking a trusted friend uh, could be a better place. But in reality, like pricing is something you can experiment with. Like again, that's a joy of owning a business is like you can raise your prices, you can lower them, you can experiment and see what works for both like how you feel about it and what people are willing to pay pay. It doesn't have to be some set thing forever. Once you set it, it's done. With your service-based business, you can change things up. Um, you know, again, I said, like, try to keep it for at least a month. Uh, but you can always change things up. And then always remember, too, if you quote someone at a lower price, I would recommend maintaining uh, that quote unless it, their proposal is expired or something like that. All right, so I hope this episode was so helpful to you guys. The bottom line to remember is to charge and price your services from a place of enoughness. Enoughness, is that even a word? I think so. Knowing that you are enough, approaching your business as the place you find your worth will get you nowhere fast, you guys. Pro like, just remember that approaching your business as the place to find your self-worth will get you nowhere fast. So price based on your experience your expertise and what makes sense for the market and your industry. So that is all for today. And I will be back with you guys next Tuesday. Bye for now.